So for our final lecture on the microeconomic demand factors, we'll be talking about how consumer confidence can affect microeconomic demand or the demand condition of various markets. Okay, so before we start off with the analysis, we'll firstly define what consumer confidence is. So consumer confidence is how optimistic one feels about one's financial future. And consumer confidence is also often referred to as consumer sentiment. But for now we just refer to it as consumer confidence. So this relates to basic ideas such as job security, um, future income, and maybe the ability to ability to meet future financial obligations. So if you have outstanding loans, you're confident that your job is safe and they can pay them off. And so what consumer confidence, how consumer confidence affects the market economic demand market is basically on large purchases. So let's look at the example of the car. So if you're looking to purchase a car for say $40,000, how a how high consumer confidence would actually affect the microeconomic demand curve for a car. Okay, so let's look at the car. So for simplicity, again, we're just going to assume that the car, the market for a car, has a relatively unit elastic uh, supply curve and a unit elastic demand curve. This is for simplicity. Uh, but as we know, the supply curve for a car is relatively. Um, Elastic because you can, you can store cars and producers can wait until the price of the car increases before selling. So, in this case, we're just going to assume that the supply of a car is relatively unit elastic. So, before any changes in prevailing economic conditions, we have the price of the car at P1, which in this case is $40,000, and the quantity traded at that price at Q1. So we have reached a market equilibrium here at E1. So now assume that consumer confidence has gone up. And this means that we are very confident that we'll be able to pay off future um, financial obligations. And this comes in the form of like interest rates or way um, different sort of payments, so bills and all that related to our financial future. So we're confident that we'll be able to pay off our bills, pay off our interest, pay off our mortgage, and pay off whatever financial obligations that we have. And so because we are confident, therefore, we, if we want to buy a car, we feel confident that if we take out a loan to buy a car, we're going to be very confident that we can pay off that loan without defaulting. So the demand for the car, or the demand for the market of the car, would shift to the right to D2. And as we can see, at this point in D2, following all the all the analysis that we've done on microeconomic demand, we'll see that the corresponding quantity demanded at D2 is Q2. And now we can see, because the supply has not actually changed, we can see that demand is at Q2, and supply is only at Q1, so we have a shortage in supply. And what that means is because producers see that there is a shortage, and because they are profit maximizing, they will slowly increase the price. And when the price starts increasing, this would result in a contraction in demand because consumers are rational and they want to find the cheapest cost alternative. And so because the price of the car increases, therefore the demand will contract. And so this represents a contraction. So what happens is that as this occurs in the market, a new price equilibrium will reach, which will denote PE, and the new equilibrium quantity will be reached at QE. And the new equilibrium point will be at E2. Okay, so what if consumer confidence goes down? We can use the same analysis to examine what happens if consumer confidence goes down in the car. When consumer confidence goes down, it means that 
we feel less confident about paying off our future financial obligations. So therefore, we're less likely to spend and more likely to save because we feel maybe our job is threatened or we may have, we don't have a um, probable or a consistent future inflow of income. So what happens in the market for cut is that we will have a tendency to not buy purchases of car at this current point in time because of our very, very low consumer confidence. So we have our original market equilibrium, at P1, Q1, and E1. And because our confidence is down, a demand for the car will shift to the left. And so what happens is when using the same supply and demand analysis, the quantity demanded at this new demand curve would be at Q1, Q2. And what this means is that the original quantity supplied is at Q1, and now the new quantity demanded is at Q2, we will see that there is a mismatch, mismatch between um, the supply and the demand. And so here we will see that there is a surplus in supply. And what that means is because there is a surplus, producers will slowly contract their demand or their supply, I should say. And because the prices decrease, consumers will tend to expand their demand. And so the market will then reallocate resources so that a new equilibrium point is reached at P, E, and a new equilibrium quantity traded at Q. And so the new equilibrium point at E2 is determined. And this is when consumer confidence has gone down. Okay, so this is the market for cars and how consumer confidence can affect the market for cars. But now let's see how this would affect the market for, say, coffee. Coffee is a very uh, small purchase. And say coffee is only two, $2, $3 per, per cup. So we have quantity here, price here. So coffee. So this is the market for coffee, and it is only three dollars. How would an increase or a decrease in consumer confidence affect the market for coffee? Well, what I would suggest is that, although theoretically it suggests that an, if an increase, if there's an increase in consumer confidence, we would actually buy more coffee. However, to logically think about this. Coffee only represents a small proportion of income, and for some people, this represents a necessity as well. So some people can't survive without having their daily coffee in the morning. It's not like we're going to increase our our demand for coffee just because our confidence is grown. And so I would argue that there is no shift in the demand curve for coffee if consumer confidence goes up, because coffee is uh, to some people, necessity and a very a proportionately to our income, a small purchase. And so consumer confidence, which affects basically the macro or the large purchases in the economy, so cars or houses, it would typically not affect a market for coffee, which is both a necessity for some people and very proportionately small in terms of their entire income. So, although theoretically suggests that um, the demand will shift to the right, logically speaking, uh, the demand for coffee should stay relatively the same if consumer confidence were to increase or to decrease. And so to recap, consumer confidence is how optimistic one feels about one's financial future, which relates to job security, future income, and the ability to meet future financial obligations. And if one feels confident that they could meet all future obligations, then that means that they would be more they would tend to purchase larger purchases, such as a car or a house, but for small purchases and especially for small necessity purchases, such as coffee, the demand curve should not change to the degree that it should, according to the theory.